Hey friends and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kate. So great to have you. I am going to be sharing a little bit about our minimalism journey with dishes and this is one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to minimalism. The category of dishes, um, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. It's very easy to just like feel like you always have dishes in the sink, in the dishwasher and just not having a good system to keep your kitchen, to keep your counters, all of that clean. So let's get right into it. we spend a lot of time in the kitchen often three times a day if not more it's a place where we serve our family over and over again a place where we are giving of our hospitality and preparing meals for guests family members friends and dare I say it is the most important room of our home I wanted to bring us to the topic of the kitchen and specifically dishes because I think this is a great place to start if you're feeling overwhelmed by your stuff and it's one of the places that you will have the biggest impact when you declutter the kitchen and the dishes it gives you kind of uh, a good kick of motivation to get you started to go and declutter the rest of the house because you do see such a big impact in the kitchen. I want you to think about how quickly dishes pile up in your sink. I want you to think about your cupboard and how quickly it is for something to get lost in there and you know things are kind of spilling out and you've got to just pile stuff in there. Just looking at the mix match of stuff it can just bring us a visual overwhelm and when we feel overwhelmed it brings a lot of stress but when our kitchen is clean Everything else just seems cleaner. When the kitchen's clean, the whole house just seems cleaner for some reason. So by simplifying your kitchen, it's not only gonna make your time in it more enjoyable, but more efficient as well. As moms, we always have a million things to do, but one thing that is tried and true is we need to prepare dinner, if not three meals, but prepare dinner every single day. It's the chore that never ends. So streamlining your process in the kitchen will save tons of time in dinner when there's you know maybe witching hour for younger kids when there's just a lot of things going on and I know for myself sometimes I felt just overwhelmed and dreading making dinner but by simplifying my kitchen it has just made it so much easier I enjoy going in there we have a great system my husband does the dishes now most nights so we just have a great system worked out so that I thoroughly enjoy my time in the kitchen I have learned to cook way better I've learned to bake more things because what I have in there is what I use and it's not overwhelming, it's not cluttered, it's not like I'm searching to find things and I'm losing my time in there. It has made it so much more enjoyable. So the first tip I want to give to you is only have what you actually use for your family on an everyday basis in your main accessible cupboards. Some people host a lot, some people not so much and we'll get there in a second but your day in day out, we have six in our family. So we have just what we use as a family of six, things that I use to bake and cook with on a regular basis. Those are all the things that are in my quickest and easily accessible cupboards. Everything else has been removed from them. Then we have another cupboard that we have for any extra guest dishes that we use. So mainly cups because often you're not always cooking a full meal, but so often you're offering your guests a drink. So keep all those glasses in this under the counter sink, beside or temporary. We just don't really utilize that space on a regular basis. So it's a great place to keep things like extra cups, tray for when I'm carrying things outside, things that we use when we're hosting or having coffee, things like that. It all goes in this other cupboard. Then we have another area of cupboards that has plates. We now host on our property up to 100 people at a time. So we do have plates and cups and not all the cutlery. We often use plastic cutlery, but we do have all of that stuff for those type of events that we're hosting on a regular basis. And those are in a completely other area. They're actually in our outdoor kitchen. We have the blessing of having two kitchens, but even before we had this second kitchen built outside, all of that stuff was kept in a separate tote because I was only using it when I was having large events or hosting large amounts of people. So I did not want it in my everyday space. There was no need for it to be there. And a lot of the times I see this with cupboards, they're so full because, oh, when you have guests, you use this stuff, but it's all mixed together with your regular everyday stuff. And then your kids will pull out something from that and something will get broken or something get lost. And then you replace the set and you, you know, have to buy a set of it. So then you end up with five extra dishes that you don't need because you broke one of the set and you only really wanted to replace one. You see where I'm going with this. So keep your stuff that you use for guests and hosting in a completely separate area. Another really great tip is to keep your kids' dishes in an accessible area that they can access. So we have kind of experimented over the years, but what works best is this. My kids are 11, 9, 5, and 20 months. The oldest three all have their own plate and they all have their own color. So my oldest is yellow, my second daughter is blue, and my youngest daughter is red. So they have a cup, a bowl, and a plate in that color. It's a matching little set. And they are responsible for keeping those dishes clean. My little guy has like a suction plate, a suction bowl, 
a sippy cup and two bottles because he still drinks bottles and that is all he has for dishes. My older girls use just regular cutlery now, my younger two still use plastic cutlery so we have a few pieces of plastic cutlery for them. Then we have an extra set of plastic bowls, there's only four of them. This is for snacks or if they're having friends over they can use their regular colored bowls and then use the other snack bowls for the kids. But I was finding that, especially with my youngest two, you know, they would take a snack somewhere and they would leave it somewhere outside on our property and then I didn't have a clean bowl to put their dinner in so we did end up getting a few extra bowls. And then my third daughter who is five, she has two cups in her color because one is always in her bedroom. She always likes to drink water at night so she has it in her bedroom. My older two both have a water bottle and they'll use those at night in their room if they want water in their room. So they each only have one cup. So this works so great for the kids, not only does it give them ownership over their color of dish, their dish that and they have to keep it clean and they're responsible for you know setting the table with it and clearing the table with it all of these things but it's accessible to them so I do not actually have to get my five-year-old a snack if she wants a snack she knows the things she's allowed to eat without asking you know healthier options I mean she doesn't have free reign to candy or anything like that but she can go and get her a snack herself when she is hungry this has been a really great system to implement for her family so the next thing I want to suggest is to keep your sink clean as much as possible it makes a night and day difference to me how I feel mentally when my sink is clean versus when it is full. We do not have a dishwasher, so I personally am fine to leave a rack out because we constantly need the rack out. For me, it's a waste of time to be putting the rack away in and out every night, but leave the rack out overnight and then those dishes go away first thing in the morning and then the dishes get done throughout the day. But make sure your sink is clean every night. I love a good disinfected sink, no lingering food or germs or bacteria laying around. Just have your sink clean, close the kitchen, mom's off duty. I just love that feeling at the end of the day of having your sink clean. When you don't clean your sink at the end of the night, you wake up to a full sink of dishes or even just a few dishes. You just, I feel like you start the day off feeling overwhelmed. Like it's just, there's already something to do on your plate. So it has really made a huge impact on me when I go to bed and have the kitchen completely clean, especially the sink. Okay, so the final point I want to talk about with the kitchen and dishes is be relentless about clearing the clutter. So I went through a minimalism journey back in Canada five-ish years ago and then I went through one again here because when we moved here the house was fully furnished including all of their stuff and the people were older and they had a lot of stuff. There was 51 pots and pans in this house. I think we're down to four now. <laughs> but there was a lot of stuff here and they had a huge china set and crystal set that they left. Now, I know myself, I know my family. We have young kids, we're hosting all the time. When we host, it's nine times out of 10 outside. We have hard tile floors. We don't have a soft floor at all in our house now. I was never going to use that china. So I kept it in there for a couple weeks because I was decluttering all the other things. I'm like, ah, oh, it looks nice. There's a china cabinet, it's full. I know I'm literally get, never gonna use it. And you know what I could use that china cabinet space for? Was a bookshelf. We didn't have very many books when we came, but because we were homeschooling, we brought as many as we could fit into a suitcase. So I needed a couple shelves for books. A place to put things that are important to me, like family photos. I did not need crystal or china. I knew this about myself. When I got married, I registered for all that because I thought that's what you're supposed to do. I think I used it once in our, you know, 12 years of marriage when we were in Canada, I think I used that stuff once and it just sat there. And I had a full china cabinet that I literally never opened and then I just had to manage the stuff, take care of it, dust it, take it all out, clean the glass shelves, you know, the whole bit. For stuff that I was never using, it made zero sense to keep it. So I got rid of all of my china twice. <laughs> for us, plastic is just the way to go for our kids and for when we have guests. So our guest stuff is all plastic. We do have like a set of four bowls, plates and mugs just because it's a matching set, I have four. I could probably even buckle down on that, but when we're doing like a fancier dinner with the kids, the older girls will use our ceramic stuff rather than their regular plastic stuff. So we have a set of four dinner plates, side plates, and bowls and mugs. And everything else in our home is plastic. We do not have any more glass or any more ceramic. That just works for us. I know what works, I know what we use, that's what stays in my kitchen. Everything else, I was very relentless about getting it out of there. This goes for pots and pans too. For us, we are a big family. Again, there's no point of me having a small pan. Sure, the odd time, maybe I'm just cooking for myself or stuff, but if I have a big pot, I just don't have to fill it as full, and I just use my big pot to cook. There's no point of having a small pot that I very rarely use. We have one cast iron grill, we have a big, one big like wok frying pan type thing, and then we have a big soup pot and like a smaller pot that I'll use for pasta and stuff. So we have four pots and pans, that's it, and that's all we need. There's no need to stack up on all the small appliances. For our family, we have an instant pot, we have a crock pot, 
um, which is like a crock pot rice maker saute. It's kind of like an instant pot, but it's not, doesn't have the pressure factor for it, but it's a multi, it's not just a crock pot. You can use it as a slow cooker or a rice cooker or um, sauteing in it, that sort of things. So we have those two pots. Then we have an air fryer. We use that thing all of the time. An air fryer is something I actually might get two of because I feel like with our big family, always have to do it in batches, but we use that all the time. Bread maker, I like to make our own bread. So I use that all the time so I don't have to get my oven super hot always. As you know, I live in a super hot climate now. What else do we have? We have a regular size coffee maker and then a large coffee maker because like I said, we often have quite a few guests here. So I have a 40 cup coffee maker and then we have a juicer when we juice. Oh, and a blender. We got rid of our food processor because our blender has a food processor attachment. It is great. Um, so those are the small appliances we have. We use them all of the time, weekly if not daily um, for most of them. In your kitchen, have only what you need, only what you use and go through it regularly. It is very easy to have things pile up. So what I suggest you do is to take everything out of the kitchen and put it in piles. See if you have any duplicates. Sometimes things get lost so you end up buying another one or you get another set of kitchen scissors for a gift, or you get whatever, you have duplicates. Especially when it comes to things like serving spoons or even cooking spoons, wooden spoons, we, we tend to end up with a lot of those things. So get rid of any duplicates, only have what you use on a regular basis. And in your kitchen cupboards, it's okay if you have an empty shelf, it doesn't need to be filled with a new serving bowl. One of my upcoming videos is gonna be going through my kitchen again, because like I said, we inherited the previous owner's things. So. I have been, we've been here almost two years now and I've slowly been decluttering more here and there, but I feel like I can once again go through and do an aggressive declutter because there was things that I had from them, like I had this lasagna tray, for example. Well, I didn't have one, so I kept it, but it was really shallow and I'm constantly spilling over it. So I ended up buying a higher side lasagna tray because that's something we make often. I didn't want to have to keep having the spillover issues, but I haven't decluttered that big one yet from the previous owners. So things like that. So I'm going to take you along and do a deep decluttering, just give you a visual of what we want to do. I want to put some better systems in place as far as some baskets for under the kitchen products and things like that. Uh, this house is just one big project. We moved into a quite an old house, like I said, with a lot of stuff and there's just been a lot of projects to do. So I'm ready to kind of start tackling things and I, we had everything, you know, kind of functioning the best that we could, but I'm ready to actually make it function well, function best for our family. So I'm going to take you along in that process. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to go back, you can check out some of my other minimalism videos. I will link them here and the minimalism playlist down below. If you want to get some inspiration and just lighten your load and have more time in your life to do the things that you want to do. I also wanted to mention I have a course launching in April. It's called The Faithful and Free Mama and there is a huge section about minimalism decluttering and not only your physical stuff but your mental stuff, your digital life, all of that. I think that's a really beneficial course for you to invest in if you're just kind of looking to overhaul your life in some of these areas. But Thank you for being here. Share this with a like-minded mama so she can find this channel and we can get connected. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. I would love to have you and I will see you on the next video. Bye.